<laughs> God damn it. I cannot convey into words how terrible the Star Trek Picard series for me personally is. Sheer fucking hubris. I fucking hate it. I hate it guys and now you may like it and that's fine but you like stupid shit and you like crap writing and you like the destruction of our lore our characters our universe and and basically turning something into it's it's not i mean the 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 producers of the show have been quoted as saying we just wanted to piss people off we wanted to rile people up that is an that actual fucking thing <laughs> well guess what it fucking worked you've ruined picard you've ruined star trek this for me is one of the worst star trek series i bet you star trek enterprise is better than star trek picard at least more faithful of the star trek series i hate nearly every aspect of this new supposed star trek i hate the characters i hate the writing i hate the plot i hate the contrivances i hate the melodrama i hate the lack of chemistry the unearned camaraderie between the crew i hate the fucking ship it just looks stupid i hate how uh fucking the chick keeps calling picard jl shut the fuck up with all due respect, JL, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Admiral Picard, with all due respect, and at long last, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, that, she does not even give. And that no. goddamn Federation, <laughs> I hate the Federation, that goddamn Admiral bitch who constantly is telling Picard to sh fuck off, shut the fuck up, sheer fucking hubris. You want an apology? Shut the fuck up. There is so much cussing. There is more cussing in half of an episode of Star Trek Picard than there was in all of the rest of the Star Trek Damn. lore, proving that this is not Star Trek. It is not. It is a vehicle to make money, to milk the fan base, to trick them, a vehicle to inject current social and issues in, and things that don't, and, and then handle it poorly. That's fine, because it's what Star Trek is for and does and has done in the past, but it's done fucking poorly. That is the end of my angry rant for now, and we're going to get your opinions. Okay, my opinion uh, I'm not a big Star Trek fan, right? And I still stand to uh, from what I said so before. I'm, I'm super not... interested in your opinion, Joe, because as a mega Star Trek fan, this pissed me off. As a person who doesn't really care about the characters or the lore, no. Did you like it? No, I'm gonna stay still. I'm still at a four, like I was before from coming into the first episodes, because I don't care about these characters. None of them are likable. Mm -hmm. This whole Woo! Soji and the sister stuff, I do not care about. This is a I've generic, run-of-the-mill little space thing that yeah. you see on one of those sci-fi channel ones. It was a waste of my time. I honestly would not watch this if I didn't have to. But Shut the fuck up, you <laughs> sheer fucking <laughs> Hubris, Joe. How yeah. dare you not well, like Star Trek? I, what I about guess the dress up episode? Some you love that oh, one, I right? I hated that one. Um, there's like, I guess there was the special moments. Is like, oh, Riker is like, oh, I yes. heard his name before. Yeah. But it didn't really oh, impact me. And like some of these. They hit for me. I was like, okay, so this is like from his previous thing. But yeah. overall, I did not enjoy this there was like no impact for me the chemistry was that and was not there at the end like these people like coupled up i was like why yeah like i didn't even know these oh, two right. these exactly. guys were together exactly why, why are they holding hands there's no fucking reason joe exactly yeah that's why i have my question mark right here <laughs> i was about I was to like, say joe i think you what? fucked up on your romulan no, eyebrow i don't think i did because the entire time i was watching this show i was like what what <laughs> what's going on <laughs> Wait, did I miss something? Now I get the question. Mark. Yeah, and I feel I feel like Soji whenever she's talking to her mom, she's like, "Oh, your log hours are only like forty seconds, and you fall asleep." That's how I felt. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I'm watching this episode." I'm like, "All right, I'm getting fucking wow. bored." Wow. So overall, nothing, nothing impactful, and like you guys always talk about TNG. It's like, "Oh, I'm gonna yes. rewatch this. I'm gonna do this." For me, I would watch Parks and Rec, The Office. Yeah. Those are like stuff I would go back to. This. 
I'm going to forget about. Mm -hmm. There's nothing memorable in this. And I want to make clear that the reason why we don't like Star Trek Picard is not because it's not TNG. I don't want it to be TNG. I don't expect it to be <coughs> TNG. It would be great if it was TNG, but I don't want it to be that. So stop with that fucking criticism now. So number one. What did you think? <laughs> so I was really struggling to come up with a way to express my disgust for P Picard. Um, and so I, 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 I wanted to give people like an analogy. And so I think I came up with one that's <laughs> kind of fitting. So, you know, in survival situations where there's people that are starving, they, they crave nourishment. Like you want something like we're, as we as TNG fans, we're, we're looking for that. Yeah. And so there's no food around. Give and me, so there's something me. called second harvest. Now, second harvest what? is when survivalists <laughs> find animal feces and they will eat it to find little bits of undigested, <laughs> unchewed berries. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and nuts. That's a great analogy. Though. Because what it ends up happening is work. I ended oh up having to chew through this giant pile of steaming shit in the woods to get these little, little bits of nourishment. Like there would be a scene of Picard and go like, all right, well... You know, that was a nice scene. The send-off for Data was incredible. There was all yes. these things. Yeah, there, that, a there, was, there was There's little good juicy good bits, of, juicy bits. of nourishment. But the Riker. problem is I had to chew through so much shit to yes. get to them you. that ultimately, if I wasn't starving to death, which I'm not. I'm not starving to death for entertainment. There's so much out there right mm -hmm. now yeah. that this is not worth doing. So unless you're the you kind of person. You forced to eat. Shit, we a ate Alex harvest. Kurtzman's horrible dialogue, plot, story, logic. Everything about this was bad other than things that I, that were totally and completely unearned. The, the last scene of the entire series was such a high note for me. It was crazy emotional for me. I loved seeing the send-off. Oh, there's spoilers. The send-off for Data was great. The song, Soji actually did something good in this thing because she's actually the one singing yes. that song. Mm -hmm. it, that was great. Some of the things with Picard were great. I love seeing Riker. Mm -hmm. Even the pizza yes, stuff, Riker. as cheesy as it was, it was great seeing yeah. these characters that I loved. Pizza with tomato basil and non-venomous bunny corn sausage. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. The problem is oh, yeah. everything between that was shit. Yes. So that's that's where I'm at with the show. I'm right there with you. There are great moments. We're not saying there's not great moments, because there are. I'm supposed to sit around in the woods making pizza while you have all the fun? Admiral Picard. There are bits and pieces, but it makes it all the more painful when you see these, these small flashes of what the show could be, yeah. and you realize what the show is. And it's not just Second Harvest from Ale uh, what's his name Kurtzman, but also oh, Michael yeah. uh, Chabon. Chabon, yes. Ka Ka Chabon. He admitted that he wanted to piss off or provoke people. That's the Mission exact accomplished. things. Make it made it so. <laughs> Make it so. <laughs> You're you are you guys are fucking idiots. Uh, when we were looking for a good send off for Picard, you've burnt, butchered and murdered the character. Um, just he's no longer Picard. Uh, he's, uh, I don't know. He's a fucking, he, this whole series is called Star Trek Picard, but he goes through it and he does absolutely nothing. He is a shell of his former self. He is l guided around by the nose, uh, by, by all these characters. Most of them in, 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 it feels very much like an agenda. Female empowerment agenda has been used. There's not, there's, name me one strong male character that this one introduces. I mean, I like the captain guy. He was pretty cool. I mean, as, 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 much, of a, as much of a, as much of a character, as much as a caricature of, of he, uh, <laughs> that he was where he like, he played soccer and he smokes cigars and he drinks tequila. He was still kind of fun. That's the only one. Yeah. That's the only one. I literally hated all the other characters. So in the Federation, there's no, there's no male characters. It's just everybody is fucking, you know, all the important characters are female and they drive the plot forward. And Picard sits in the back seat of his own fucking series and he doesn't really do anything and he makes suggestions and he does one or two speeches, but that's it. He's not at the forefront. This isn't Star Trek Picard. This is Star Trek Soji. This is Star Trek uh, Synthetics. This is uh, Star Trek uh, bastardization. Uh, it is not... It doesn't that Gene Roddenberry would be like, what, what is going on here? This is not 
I, I don't know what you're doing because this is Well, terrible. you destroyed the universe that he built. Like, yeah. his universe free of currency that it, we're so far in the future where we're not cursing anymore. Yeah. Well, like, no, wait, now, no. Yeah. Now everyone's space now races. Now it's 2020. Um, yeah, it's there, 2020 there's, right there's now. There's rich and poor. And there's space races again. We're back to, like, we're 800 years in the past. And so you've ruined everything that, that you know, the, 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 the all of the it. series has kind of built up. Picard so. just gives up, goes to his vineyard. Picard. The guy who saved the universe multiple times just gives up and goes to his vineyard. Uh, Romulan signs are fucking in English. Uh, the, the, you know, in a chalkboard. The late, uh, the, Ralphie is mad at him because he's rich and she's poor. I saw you sitting back in your very fine chateau. Big oak beams, heirloom furniture. Yeah, I, I'd show you around my estate, but it's more of a hovel, so that would just be, you know... Humiliating. Humiliating. What? Uh, you know, and just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. I, f I fucking hate it. Every time I watch this series, and as I'm watching this series, and it, get, it gets worse and worse, uh, you know, as you go along from episode uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that 10th episode, by the 10th episode, I was saying this. With all due respect, and at long last, shut the fuck up. Oh, it's <laughs> the clip that I played. You should play the clip where uh, they're all hitting themselves, like killing themselves. Yes. Oh, yeah. So stupid. Uh, it, it basically, Star Trek Picard, it uh, rehashes a story that we've seen a thousand times. Uh, we've most recently seen it in Mass Effect. It literally just apes that entire storyline, just uh, takes it, rejiggers it around I for various things, and says, <laughs> I made this well, no, while destroying uh, the, the Star Trek universe and the lore and the meticulous crafting world building that went into that universe and all for nothing all for shit all for less than optimal characters even rios is like an average character he'd be like a side character in any other star trek series not the one that we all like the most it, it's absolutely ridiculous and i i really don't know how to convey into words how disappointed i am and how this series started good and we were worried and now it ends up as one of the worst Star Trek uh, pieces of content I've, I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. and, and the worst part is it's not with side characters. It's not in an alternate universe. It's not, you know, with characters that, yeah, <laughs> our Archer, I don't give a fuck about or it's, I don't care about. No, you're using like the main fucking people that I care about and you're doing it very poorly. And that was probably about the worst thing that could happen. She is not one of the new ones. The Borg entered her. She was a jeune fille. You are going to have to dice her up to get it all out. Uh, these characters I don't really care about. The whole scientist uh, chick, her whole arc was I crap. Fucking I, hate I, Yes, I hated so it. I was like, mm -hmm. And everybody just forgives her for being a murderer. The first thing that she does after she murders her fucking husband or boyfriend or longtime lover is she goes and fucks Rios. I'm more mad. Doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, I'm more mad. I had to watch that whole stupid episode of them dressing up, and then she's she just a piece kills him. Shit, <laughs> and I fucking hate her. And she's a part of the crew. <laughs> like, like, hey, we're going on with her, and she's gonna be a great character. Fuck yep. that. Get the fuck off the ship now. Yeah. And Picard, the worst thing is, uh, as a tour, is very sternly saying what you did is wrong. Oh, really? Mur murder bad. Get the fuck out of here. No. When we arrive, you will surrender yourself to the authorities for the murder of Bruce Maddox. What happened to Deep Space 12? I, am I still under arrest? There was a change of plan.
am I still under arrest? Yeah, like I was saying, um, I I hate her more because during that episode, I hated that episode. They had to dress up and try to get Bruce, so they put me through that hour long bullshit. And then she kills him. The we next time we need to talk time. about some of the later episodes. I'm like that. Didn't we already sucked. talk about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying her okay. character just pissed me off because of that. Um, the whole uh, thing with Picard and Data. Data. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. That's which, fine. Which, how do you say it? It's Data. 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 Okay. data call don't, him Data. Don't call him The internet will love it. The internet will love it when you Data call him Data. Data Picard. No. Did they have, like, a bromance? What was going on? No, not at all. No? No, not at all. Because I was like, uh, I he, guess he I, that's something him with I respect. don't get. He treated him as another crewman. He treated him as an equal uh, and respected him, but he never, like, fucking, like, loved him. Maybe maybe there's some undercurrents there, yeah. but then in the movies, they really kind of blew up this relationship. Picard's really stuck. Picard is basically... Well, that's what I got from that. I was yeah. like, I, I guess these two guys the are like movies, best friends. This is a continuation from the movies, not TNG. Yeah. Uh, so four out of ten. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really surprised because that's slightly below average. Uh, but that's from a person who hasn't. Because uh, yeah, this is basically just like, uh, right. like I said before, just a generic uh, sci-fi Yeah little thing you see on the channel that you played before in Mass Effect. <laughs> I mean, I could definitely I can definitely understand what you're coming from. It, having no experience with this world, this does probably does feel like below average sci-fi. Yeah, There's didn't. a lot of like not very good sci-fi and this probably just feels just a below it. Um, I didn't like any of the new characters. Well, I like I said, I kind of like Rios. He was, but he's he was side. Thing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I get that, but like I'm giving trying to give it credit where there yeah. is some credit due, right? So I kind of liked Rios. Um, I think from a thousand feet or yards away, the story is fine. But the second you look any closer than that, you're like, okay, this is the overarching story. Yeah. Like this, this happened, and then this happened, and then this is how we're going to resolve it. It's like, okay, That's fine. The respect that they gave to the series that you know, it sounds good on paper, but when you examine it any further, you it can't all falls you can't look apart. any closer than that because as they are doing certain things, they're retconning things that we know from the show. They're re they're changing things, timelines that that happened in previous episodes. There's just things that don't make sense. The there, there's a lot. Yes, there's a lot. Uh, there, well, well, yeah, we could make what? a two hour video on how many fucking plows there are. We'd have to go episode by episode in order to get that done. Uh, well, I don't want to I don't want to go into too many of them, but like the, there's things like. Uh, the the crazy Romulan on the ship recognizes her as a story. There's no way that doesn't happen. It, 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 they're making it up because what they saw was not pictures of her, was not pictures of data. It was a you know a synth message for synths, and we know exactly what it was because they showed us later on, and her face isn't there. So there's all of this stuff that they just kind of make up to try to trick you into one thing, and then they showed you what it was in the end. So I think it was really lazy writing as far as like dialogue, overall plot. Yeah. But there was some really high points that I don't think that they absolutely deserved. There mm -hmm. were. Parts where they use, uh, you know, sound bites from DS9 and TNG that really got me going, like emotionally, because I love those things so much and I love yeah, seeing them. The the send off <laughs> at the very end, like the last scene in this in this uh, series, was really really powerful. Like it got me right there. I'm like, man, this song is really good. This is perfect. So there are really really high highs, but the problem is there's so few and they're so far in between that I'm not just a little below average. I'm probably at a three. Out of 10. And that's being realistic. Honestly, like feeling-wise, I'm like, fuck, this is 1 or 2 out of 10. It's horrible garbage. Right. But there were yes. some okay things. It was kind of nice to look at. It is like a you know made-for-TV type series. But it's, I don't think it's worth watching. And I think if you have any love for any of the characters like I do, absolutely stay away. Stay <laughs> away from this. Uh, act like it doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, the universe stays intact. Rewatch TNG. Rewatch uh, any uh, DS9. Shit, go watch Babylon 5 again because that shit's cool Fuck, too. Fuck, you can even watch the goddamn Star Trek movies and mm. still be okay. Half of them. No, I don't want you to, to watch this and, and you know as a non-Star Trek fan... But Joe has already done that. Um, I agree. I want to give it a fucking zero. I want to give it a <laughs> one. I want to give it a two with how much I cared about this universe and how poorly it was uh, treated and executed. Uh, Star Trek, uh, you know, it says Star Trek Picard, but he really does nothing in the series and he's just uh, sidelined. There's so many, so many different social agendas of current events and what's going on in the world now injected into the series, but done in poor ways and done in ham-fisted ways and done in ways there's, there's not really any morals or lessons to take from it. Uh, it, it just falls on deaf ears and, it, and a lot of it just feels thrown in just to throw it in, just to like placate or pacify a particular segment of the market. 
for example, at the very last, one of the very last shots is a seven of nine who has had a relationship with uh, Chicote, uh, you know, other Joe over You've there. You've been nullified. <laughs> You've been nullified. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, she is now bisexual with, yeah. and, but she's with Ralphie. Uh, what's the girl's name? Ralphie. Ra- Raffy. Raffy. Raffy, Raffy. Like that. Uh, be, it's like they're shown to be holding hands and they're smiling at each other like they've had sex or they've had relations. Uh, in this series, they introduce Seven of Nine as being, a le- uh, you know, as being bisexual. I chalked it up to like, I guess that happened before and something I missed. Right, like sure. In, yeah. But they do that storyline with that other lady where they go into the underground seedy world oh, and Seven of episode. Nine has been experimenting, you know, uh, you know. Sexually, and you can you can believe that because she's a Borg, and you know she's probably you know pretty good at her facilities like Data was, and things like that. And she's just experimenting with you know humanity and all these other things. But it at the very last scene, out of fucking nowhere, these two are in a relationship, and it's implied that they've been together and they're doing something now, and they're now uh, partners. And you're you're like what? It wasn't fucking at no point. The first time she's on the ship, she beams over the ship. She doesn't even look at her. She doesn't yes. talk to her. She doesn't say nothing. It's just like there's no chemistry and between any of them. No chemistry. There's no chemistry anywhere. Exactly. Anywhere. That's why I not said, between the fucking maybe uh, fucking Elrond and Picard and and Seven of Nine Question and Elrond. Mark. There's no chemistry. How dare you use his name? I know, I know, but they just throw it in there to throw it in there, like, oh, look at that. That's you know, that's great. It's like, but but you didn't put purpose. It. <laughs> you need to earn these moments because then next when you show it, you're like, well, I don't know when they met and I would. Yeah, it's just. I don't. I don't care about. This. It's so stupid. <laughs> I did it's not. so like, fucking stupid. Mm, and they do these things constantly. I just put a phaser to my head and get it over with. Because I'd miss you. Well, I mean, they, they also do these things constantly. Well, conveniently, the the you know Soji's like the really the main character, and she immediately falls in love with this Romulan. So not only such a forced romance with Narek. So what, she was programmed to love. Such a huge part of your series is a romance, and none of it works. Yeah. And then you mm-hmm. have a incestuous relationship Will between they want him that? and his fun, sister. Right? Oh. <laughs> like what the fuck? Did you weird. fuck her? Did you uh, did y'all fuck? Did y'all have sex? Like shut the fuck up. Huh. Have you found them? Yes, they're all here. Have you fucked any of them? Mm, not yet. It is what weird. is this doing in Star Trek? I don't understand this. This is not Game of Thrones, Alex Kurtzman. Yeah, no, 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 no. Say, wait. This is not Game of Thrones, you stupid fucking idiot. You did you're taking me. what's popular <laughs> now and you're forcing it into the Star Trek universe. I'm pissed. I'm going to go episode by episode now. If you don't want that, it is a three. It's a fucking three out of ten. You want to know why? Because Riker is cool. They have a great send off for Data, and there's maybe one other cool moment. One of the episodes felt a little bit like, you know, some of the shit. Like there was like Hugh, episode Hugh nine with the, was, with the fucking, uh, you know, like flowers and shit, and and I cool, like interesting that. shit. Two yeah, hundred chips, interesting and shit. shit. Chips, right? Like, yeah, that could so have been cool. So three points there, but everything else in between, so god. Dang eye rolling. I, the, the eyes will literally fall out of my head. They were rolling so hard. The name is Rios. It is Rios. Guys, I, if you like the series, I'm, I'm not personally attacking you. I take it back. <laughs> you don't have bad taste. You don't recognize uh, good writing. Uh, you, you, or you do recognize good writing. And uh, characters and motivations and properly set up uh, relationships and camaraderie and themes. There's this is not. No, you're stupid. <laughs> you are stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with you. Question mark. You're uh, perfectly fine to like this. Look, series. this can be your favorite series if it's the only series you've ever watched. If it's the only Star Trek you've ever been exposed to. If you've been exposed to other Star Trek, especially. TNG, 
That where all know. these characters were in previously, uh, some of the background ones are the ones they would like to focus on. Uh, these are not those characters. Mm -hmm. And you have to be a little bit upset about how they've treated them. Anyways, uh, if you like it, because tons of fun. Let, I'm just going to call him out. Tons of fun. Chris. He said it. Yeah, he runs AJ's Table Time for us. He likes it. He's like, you know, for all the hup law, I, li I like it. I think he did just rile but you up. But he couldn't up. defend any of his positions. He's trying to get rile you up. I think he's up. either trying to rile you up. Or, I mean, some, <laughs> yeah. sometimes when you, you're <laughs> in the mood. He likes doing that. I when you sit down and you just watch something and you don't put any <laughs> thought into it. Like, you're just enjoying yeah, it, right? Yeah, if you turn your brain off. Then that's fine. And there's nothing wrong sure, with that. Sure. But even when you turn your brain off, the little little nuggets of uh, sweet candy that they give you. Hidden it, in the shit. Hidden in the it, it's, you're chewing It's hidden in the shit. But even that has no fucking value. It isn't, it's even not even that sweet. It's like going to your grandma's house and then eating the candies. And, and man, they look great, but then these candies tin, are not that great. <laughs> They're like, what, where, where did you get these candies, Grandma? I, I don't even understand well, don't where you buy your candy. <laughs> They're here when I moved All in. Right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much uh -huh. for watching. We are going to do a massively huge, big spoiler section. Uh, and I may make it a separate video because this is going to bloat it. Um, and I have just so much notes off each episode. Um, so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Star Trek Picard is an abomination. It flies against everything that the Star Trek uh, universe was set up for. Um, the showrunners have admitted that they were trying to piss people off uh, and, you know, put some s social commentary and things. And that's fine. And it's good to tell people, hey, um, wouldn't it be great if hum humanity ha has risen above these things? And, and if they have, like, you know, how do we... Uh, you know, how do we fix other races problems or, or how do we have conflict? Um, and this is none of that. This is uh, this is literally Trump is president and uh, the, the world is falling apart and it's class warfare. And it's basically current times just with a veneer of Star Trek and some of the old characters kind of shoved in to make you feel great. And then a few highlights here and there giving you closure on data, making you feel good with what Riker is doing. And uh, Picard just kind of uh, visiting uh, very shortly while doing this really, really shitty plot line. He's All a right, terrible guys. friend, by the way. Who? Picard. The oh, only, yeah. The he's only awful. Yeah, the only time he shows up is whenever he's in trouble. Yeah. He mm -hmm. brings trouble. He's like, telling fuck. Me. Mm -hmm. The fuck you want now, Picard, or JL? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you JL now. If you no. Do that one more time. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, stick with us in the spoilers discussion, extended discussion area, and we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Welcome to the Star Trek uh, Picard season uh, finale review, season as a whole review, extended spoilers discussion. I'm going to go episode by episode. Um, it looks like for some episodes, I have zero notes. I must have uh, just fell asleep, like fell so asleep, got very angry. So fuck it. So five, I have nothing. Sixth, um, I didn't think it was possible to be worse than the last episode. That's my first note. <laughs> uh, five was a dress up time, right? I think it oh, was. My, yeah, my one was. note for episode five is dress up is garbage. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all I wrote because the whole episode was, was garbage. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't think it was wor it was uh, possible to be worse. It was because episode six, you got forced romance uh, with Narek. You've got the captain playing soccer just to play to a demographic, I guess. Sure, fine. He's Mexican. He's Latino. He's, he, he likes soccer. 
Uh, the doctor has sex with the captain after killing her husband. Like, literally, immediately after she kills her husband, yeah. she just, like, fucks him. And Sky, no, this is a bad and, idea. And it's not just I have a superpower. But let's do it anyways. Right. And it's not just, like, you know, like, fu- you know, fucking, you know, getting his dick wet or her being horny. No, it's like now they kind of have an on and off relationship and they have feelings for each other. And then towards the end of the series, it's like legit feelings. It's like, like holding hands. Like, and shut shit. the fuck up. Yeah, no, they start not taking at all. Her. He's like, oh, no, you can't. I was like, really? Really? That, that's cheap. This, this is, is this the worst thing in the series. Like, it pissed me off so much. Like, oh, that's the so worst thing from that episode? The worst from thing that for, episode, for, I think. The worst thing in this episode is uh, apparently the secret Romulan police thinks think it's easier to delve into the subconscious of the most highly developed android to ever exist than just to follow the chain of space Ubers it took to get to the artifact. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to try to trick her into walking down this fucking Candyland path to unlock her fucking subconscious to go into a dream to see some moons that are apparently real moons because they knew it was there and it doesn't make any fucking no, sense. It and instead, sense. they just go like, oh, she took a taxi here. We'll just follow the taxi receipts. Oh, uh, the taxi came from this planet. Cool. That makes sense. So, yes, that's very true. But <laughs> on top of that, the whole uh, the way it's conveyed, uh, uh, the whole episode is boring as fuck. Uh, Ral- uh, Ralphie, Ralphie, sweet talks the Federation like to, into doing something. Well, blackmails that him, kind of. Blackmail. There's no fucking way that she could do this. But oh, because she had sex with that girl, and they, it's implied they had a fucking relationship. So they're they're gonna have, you know, she needs help. So she, she gets help on something that they're not allowed to do and go visit that confusion. Fucking cube, whatever. It's but but then it's like, wait, is this cube owned by the Romulans or the Federation? Is it a joint operation? Is it like what I just. We're God spy, damn we're it! Spy, and and spy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you can just approach the board cube artifact. There's like no real security and ships flying around that will shoot you the fuck down if you try to approach a board fucking cube. Uh, they just go over there. They they're had just clearance. like no. <laughs> I, like before they had clearance, they're like over there. Like get the fuck out of here. No. Uh, Hugh and Picard is re- reunited. That's like the only thing like in that. that. But See, but even for me, you didn't know who that was. But I, I kind of like. Right. I even, like. It, it, no, there's nothing. He kind of likes it, but it lacks impact. Yeah. Even for me, and I, yeah, we've seen Hugh in maybe two or three TNG episodes out of one hundred, three hundred, ten. I so many episodes, oh, right? Yeah. And we're supposed to. This is supposed to be a big moment, anyways. Um, and then the so Soji's dream sequence in this stupid fucking Romulan room that Narek like sweet talks her into going in and it's just a stupid thing it's so stupid it's a choose your own it's adventure a cringe. it's a jump to conclusions <laughs> uh, yes. a game to con- it's like somebody made this up <laughs> in the writing room and they thought it sounded so good and it's so cringy and it's so and somehow it works piece? on and it the works. brains of androids it makes no sense it doesn't make any fucking sense at all okay so fuck that episode we're moving on okay. episode seven seven scene of doctors seeing the visions uh, from the Vulcan lady right and this scene of this horrible horrific thing it's just awkwardly cut together uh and and she like immediately believes them right you you like you see that right and it it horrifies you but you know you're just gonna immediately 100 percent like a zealot believe in everything that 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 scene you know she could have you know, influence you. She could have just she could have just made it all up. Watch CGI movie, and then is putting the movie in your head. Like, there's so many things, right? But no, she immediately believes her so goddamn much to she her kills. core that she's gonna kill her husband, and she's gonna go onto the ship to be a fucking assassin for the Federation, or she's secretly be the assassin. For the no training or anything. Her, her mind is stronger than Soji. Yeah, her, her mind is also stronger than like ninety percent of the the Romulan the secret trained- police. Romulan secret police. They were killing themselves with rocks, and she's just like, "I'm going to show you what I saw." And it's just like, "Oh!" And she doesn't totally, think she's going to totally kill cool. one of the greatest scientists who it knows a lot about android research. No. <laughs> I also want to point out how stupid the ship is. Like every Star Trek series has had cool ass ships. I fucking hate Rios's ship. It's an empty room. What is it? What is it called? The Santa Maria? I I don't know what. If, I don't. Know <laughs> I don't. What I don't think. It, is it really? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. Don't so, you, do you know the ship name? No, of course not. Is that not a problem? It's fucking it's Star it's Trek. Just, you don't fucking know the ship name. It's a piece of shit. I can't even visualize the ship. That's how fucking shitty it is. I hate all the numerous floating instruments and panels in that ship. 
Though that shit would go out if the slightest system damage that you would take, all these floating things gone. But someone just figured out in uh, in Adobe Premiere how to put those things up on the I screen. Know. So they're like, "Hey, I figured out how to do look this thing." Cool look how cool this is! It'll make so our cool. budget look so. I can so big. I can drive like this. Wait, we take one photon torpedo. <laughs> Oh, 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 we're dead in space. No, because you can't press a fucking button. At least, yes, TNG. Yes, the uh, saw. Uh, I, I. What's the uh, name for it? Uh, the tech, uh, the tech system. So I, like I, I used to know the name. For they it. were filled. Th those but panels were filled and built out of sparks, though, because yeah. anytime they took damage, like sparklers would explode out of them. But at like, least what? those were buttons, anyways. That you could still press when the ship was, uh, was damaged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but there's lens flare galore everywhere ah. in episode seven. It's like this is completely they want, unnecessary. They, these are, this is based on like the Abrams, like right? They're they're borrowing heavily no. from like the Abrams films, right? No. The whole Romulan supernova. So one thing. or two elements from yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, but, the, but there's no reason to grab the worst element from it. He just figured out how to use Adobe Premiere, yes. dude. I figured out He's lens like flare doing and floated panels. It is for literally the lowest common denominator, and that's not what Star Trek is for. It's not. It's not good uh, for everybody. That's no. good. No, fuck, fuck Star Trek that. should be for everybody. Everyone should watch TNG. You're right. I'm Everyone. just mad. It's, it's for everybody. It I'm just very angry I, that you're stuffing unnecessary lens flares, covering up the characters, and covering up everything that I'm looking at. So cool. That has never been in Star Trek. The more Trek. lens flares... There, the there needs to be a theme. There needs to be uh, you know, a, a cohesive vision. And this is, this is nothing like what we've seen before, and it's awful. Yep. Anyways... Elnor is a stupid uh, subplot with Hugh in that episode. Yes. How does Elnor break his way into the most secret queen's chambers of a board <laughs> cube? He's never been in there before. With his sword. And he has a fucking sword, and he looks like an asshole, and he breaks his way into the most secret room that no one else knows how to get into, by the way. And he's just like, I'm a space samurai, <laughs> and I'm here. And it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. It's, Why are you here? Right. Uh, and I, I guess he's know. now he's like, fuck Picard, you're a more hopeless cause. All you Borg idiots are stupid and y'all are helpless and I'm going to fight for you now. With my sword. With my sword. Um, it's literally garbage. This episode is literally garbage till Picard is being planet side. Uh, and this is finally when we get to meet Riker and Troy. So episode seven. So like that uh, episode is garbage until we get uh, planet side. Then Making episode pizza. seven has a bright spot. This is what I gave one point for. Uh, Riker and Troy, um, they have a daughter and a dead son for, for some reason, uh, perhaps to explain why they wouldn't just pack up and help Picard immediately. Uh, when Picard comes with a problem, they're like, well, you know, our son died and uh, we're taking care of our, our daughter. And so we can't. I think that the son dying was to push that the, the anti synth right. uh, legislation like really hurt in other places, too, because mm -hmm. their son died because they weren't able to create. The enzyme to, to cure the sun, because that's why the sun There's died. a Star Wars reference. I wish I would have put more detail, but there's a Star Wars reference. Uh, there's really shitty, awkward dialogue exchanges uh, back and forth on the ship. Uh, Riker and Picard exchanges, though, were r so damn good. When they're, when they're on the lake talking as two people, Perfect. like there was a lot of scenes in there that were just like horrible exposition where they're like, hey, we need to have Riker and Picard meet. You're like, cool. Are you going to write anything? They got this. No, we're just going to write the good scene and we're everything else just like say whatever you want. Yeah. And it didn't feel cohesive. Whoever wrote that scene got it right. Yeah. Um, try one, a tomato like like this. Never you, 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 you've never eaten a fruit or a vegetable or a anything. Not in the cube. She was, she was programmed. How do, how do I try one? Like this? No, you put up your ass. <laughs> she knows every language. She knows every system. Put it up your ass. <laughs> you stupid bitch. Who let this dumb bitch in here? <laughs> try one. Like this? Take a bite. Uh, the reason her son died from a disease is ridiculous. Uh, it punches you right out of this great moment in the episode. 
Uh, so when when she's trying to explain, uh, we you know, the counselor. We didn't have the technology, but now we do. It. Well, they they had the technology to do it, but then they didn't want to do it, and then they had to fight. They have all, all these replicators and all this uh, technology to cure diseases and stuff, but all of a sudden they don't have all this stuff, and then they can't do all this, and then they need to do this or that. It, it's just the gymnastics required to get their son dead is fucking ridiculous, and it's just written in there because of what Ali, uh, Alex said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he was killed. Is no one can hit a grown man with a disruptor. <laughs> I yes, guess you I, you know, we're, we're, they're firing and they can't hit the target apparently in here. So they're about as good as uh, shooting as, you know, Star Wars. Maybe that was a reference. Apparently replicators uh, look like cheap 3D printers, by the way. You, you see a, a real replicator real quick and it is literally just... The, the the stringy cheese 3D printer that prints something. I'm like, it, that is not a replicator. <laughs> We've seen replicators before in this universe. Did the budget run out? <laughs> I, Probably. I, I, yeah. I don't know. So space I fucking hate episode <laughs> seven. Moving on to episode eight. Broken pieces. This one starts so laughably. Uh, this is getting dumber and dumber and dumber. Everyone, hang on to the merry-go-round. Oh, shit. This shitty vision is not even horrific. And these ladies start to commit suicide. The least you could have done is did some individual scenes of something more more something more terrifying. Instead, you're staring at things that you can't comprehend or look at. And and it's like red. Uh, It's like flashes. and, And it's dumb as fuck. If you slow it down, I slowed it down. It was like... Mass piece. Effect did a better, more horrific version in their vision, which it's the exact same vision, by the way. Um, and also, yet another all-female group. I know it's so weird for me to say this because I don't want to seem like a men's right activist because those guys are fucking morons. But at the same time, I see a god dang agenda in here. Every important character, every person that makes decisions are females and the guys are idiots. They are broken. They are stupid. They do nothing. And they are subservient to the women. So, yes, we have another all-female group, this Vulcan or uh, Romulan, Romulan group who can see these visions. Can they handle it? Can they not? Do you, you know, another all-female group. Do you get it? They cannot handle do, do it. Do you get it? They can't I, handle that do, shit. Do, do you get it how shitty men are and how awesome women are? Men suck and women are strong is the is the no. Admiral Picard, with all due respect, and at long last, and at long last, shut the fuck up. And then, you know, El- Elrond or Elnor or whatever Elnor. the fuck his name is. Uh, what what group does he come from? Romulans. No, Seven no, runs. a very specific group. Oh, the, the, the battle nuns? Yeah, the, an all-female group where they shun him for being a man. Do you get See, it? I Do you get it? about that. You know, the is, battle nuns? You, you don't remember the battle now? nuns? Hey, who's in charge of the Federation? What? Do you get it? <laughs> Fuck you, Picard. You fucking piece of shit. All right. And the other la- uh, Federation lady where you tried one. to tell, hey, this shit is going on. Yeah. The Romulan and she's in. Yes. Anyways. She threw up. Seven no, eat this. <laughs> Star Trek <laughs> forgot, apparently. Star Trek forgot that people can lie and make shit up and make up visions. Like, so why, why believe in these people so fundamentally, right? Because it was so That powerful. they're saying the universe is going to explode and evil things are coming you got to provide a little more proof and but no everybody is convinced that this is really happening so anyway seven of nine saves Elron. um this you know auntie character she the, it, this this oh, is so yeah this is my favorite fucking my favorite part stupid go ahead my favorite part of the whole thing is so the the ant character uh went through the vision quest and she couldn't quite handle it she was like yeah the destroyer yeah, she loses her mind a so little I bit. I hated her character. And so she ends up on a scout ship with Romulans that inter- uh, that get contacted by the artifact. The artifact assimilates them. Now, when she gets assimilated, because she her mind is filled with so, what is despair, it's like <laughs> she her, her brain is filled with such despair <laughs> that the despair in her brain broke broke all the Borg the cube. The Borg cube, the most powerful weapon in the Star Trek universe. One of the highest threats their species. We won't get into that. But one of the most powerful threat, Joe, was destroyed through her sheer despair. She was breaking a Borg cube and the sheer force of your despair. Yeah. God damn, you're so depressed. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Beast. Robots. 
<laughs> robots. No. Even that can so adapt to any fucking weapon. Robot. That can live in space, by the way, which is what happens later in this episode. How they bad? Launch. We've seen that in Star Trek. Uh, um, it's a, First uh, no First Contact. Yeah, they're they're bored walking, walking outside. In, but that's in how they kill vacuum, all the they kill the board by kill launching them into space. By putting them into space. They can, oh, no. <laughs> they can live in space because that's what the board do. She could just scoop how all those Borg back be? up. See, Seven of Nine is the worst Borg queen. Yeah, she literally could have scooped up all her people and put them back in their things. But when she shows up with the Borg cube, it's all on fire and it's fucked up and it's a piece of shit and everybody's dead mm-hmm. because she's the worst Borg queen. <laughs> Anyways, but I just want to point whole- out. How Alex Man, come on. is not lying. She broke a whole fucking Borg cube with her sheer force of despair. That's the quote. Fuck this series. How bad was, she, was it to drive away a robot? <sighs> She's a woman, Josh. No, the, the Borg then it's like. What, what? She, she like depressed the Borg. She's like, I'm out. It, uh, par- yeah. Like I read the thing that it, her, her despair broke the Borg submatrix, severed the cube off yeah. from the, the rest of the Borg, and left mm-hmm. everyone else in space. So what are they trying to say about women and I have their no emotions? fucking idea what the this point is, is. This is sexist. <laughs> so it's trying to champion oh women, God. but apparently it's saying that women uh, are so no, emotional. No. <laughs> nope. nope. No, I'm just, it's a joke, I, man. Relax. I know, Shut but the fuck I, up. I, I, Rios I stares at Soji and Picard, beca- and, and Picard just ignores this. So Rios is like, what the fuck? Fuck! When he sees Soji, he's like, and Picard's just like, yeah. He just fucking ignores that, and he believes uh, the doctor. No, no, hold on. So he is like Picard, fucking stupid in this series. Like he is so meticulous in details, and he's really fucking good. And all of a sudden, he just doesn't understand that he notices something between Rios and and uh, Soji. Then, then Picard doesn't believe the doctor is an agent for the enemy. Yep, it's Picard. Old. Fucking dumb in the series. Yeah, he has brain problems, remember? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but they don't imply that. But, Picard are dumb. Uh, <laughs> so I am so sick of, uh, you know, Clancy. That's the character, that old woman who is in charge oh, of the Federation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so sick of her cus- cursing. Look, ah, I wrote this down. I am motherfucking angry Joe. I have been cursing like a sailor for 35 years, Okay. <laughs> But when it's done here in Star Trek, it feels forced. It feels like, ooh, edgy. Ooh, it, it's shitty oh writing my God. is what it is. It's like your friend's mom cursing it, or something, and you're just like, like eye-rolling. That doesn't sound right. No, your friend's mom's aunt, you know, <laughs> not, not even like a grandma where you're like, oh, yeah. No, no. It's, it's so stupid. It is uh, this whole series – and what is she doing? She's telling Picard, one of the you know legendary characters, and he's right. In this instance, he was right and she was wrong. And she tells him to shut the fuck up because it's men are dumb overdue. and women are smart. Because remember, that's the theme of she this. Said. The theme of Star Trek Picard is men are dumb and women are smart. And even when you're right, shut the fuck up. Admiral Picard, with all due respect, and at long last, and at long last, and at long last, shut the fuck up. I'm sending a squadron to rendezvous with you at DS-12. Now stay put until they get there. And, okay, Picard is the title character, so we'll let him be right once, but shut the fuck up. I hate this show. I hated this episode, not for being boring like some other ones, but for being absolutely insultingly shitty. Uh, And then Raffi... Uh, her research with the hologram and the doctor is hilarious. She literally finds out the most complex thing in the universe in, in, in the hollow in seconds. That was so fucking boring. The jump in logic there <laughs> and what they needed to discover via this shit was too much. Yeah. Too much. It was bad writing because the writers wrote themselves in a corner and they're like, how are we going to get these characters to know this and then go there Guess what they're setting up Seven of Nine to be a Borg Queen. I knew that was coming. And then later on, she becomes a Borg Queen. Um, How were the Borg cubes destroyed before if they have nanites that repair themselves so fast? So it's shown that Borg cubes have these nanites that could just repair shit. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen Borg cubes be attacked in the past, and they don't release the nanites. I I don't understand. Are these nanites new? or They had to retcon a bunch of stuff because, like, it it directly challenges the finale of Voyager and a bunch of other things where they're just like, Borg are nothing like you've ever seen before. There's something new that can't survive in space, and everyone's stupid. What the hell is going on? 
the cube, it seems to be, I would almost say it's regenerating. I would almost say it's regenerating. I would almost say it's regenerating. We can blow the seals and jettison them directly into space. Oh, I like that. One good thing the episode does get is Picard in this episode, we're still in episode eight, does kind of admit that he his coldness towards Data. Uh, and so that was nice. He kind of admits that, you know, he didn't treat Data the way he should have treated him. Mm -hmm. But you have to do that if later on it's if you're gonna have a secret yeah. love for him, uh, which is fine because he had a love for every single one of his crewmates. He just didn't show he it He just well. didn't show it yeah. that well. And so it was nice to see Picard admit that maybe he didn't show it that well. Um, so the Scottish engineer, <laughs> of course it's a Scottish engineer, of course. Ian. Oh, I see. I'm the emergency engineering hologram. I go by Ian. First of all, I'm going to ask you never to call me Lassie again. Julie Lloyd. Uh, Rios is hollow because Rios has 15 fucking hollows. <laughs> Rios has some kind of past with Soji, right? And Captain Rios has a relationship with his hollows. So this medical hollow gets in people's, uh, you know, space. So then one of the medical hollows just gets in people's space. It, it's just like it's played for a joke. I did not laugh. I did not laugh. It was not funny, and I didn't like it. None of them. Uh, was he funny. was the only new compelling character. So this is when I realized that the only new compelling character is Rios, mm -hmm. because he's got he plays so many different characters. He's but it, only just barely, as we don't know his past, you know. And by this episode, we don't know his past. Uh, it looks like Soji was his girlfriend or his wife at that point. Uh, there's five hollows of Rios, and we sort of try to investigate his past. Uh, but yeah, anyway. And then when people talk about that vision of the Romulans, that, did you see that vision? It was so horrific. It's hilarious because the vision itself is not fucking horrific. It's We've not. seen it. There's like there's like a still of data in there for some reason. Like you see his eye and it's like, what? No, absolutely Is, no is that data? It just look like a random android to me. Uh, it's so pathetic. And here people talk about it as just the worst. They film everything so bright and colorful. It needed to be red, red, blood. Just cover the face of that android in red and blood and hellish backgrounds. Not these little bright, little cheery things. Mm -hmm. The writing is so shitty. The doctor is empathetic that a droid. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the doctor is so enthusiastic that a droid drinks when she's thirsty. Remember when Soji drinks? Doctor, you, you drink you when you're hungry. Mm -hmm. I eat but with what she just saw, she wouldn't have this feeling any longer about androids. So you're telling me simultaneously she was affected by this vision of what androids could do to, you know, in, in the future. And she, she's going to kill her husband and lover. But at the same time, she's going to marvel that, that Soji drinks. And she's, like, emphatic with it. That's why he fucking hated her. The writing. I'm just trying to point out how the writing is so fucking pointless. No, yeah. Then the doctor refuses to kill Soji, even though she killed her lover. Hello! She's the fucking destroyer. She's the whole reason. She's the reason. She's the reason you killed your husband. Instead of killing your husband, you could have killed her and then done. And then you could have been sad about that, And but then you would have saved the universe. But no, you killed a husband, and then you can't kill her. Nope. Mm-hmm. So she's like... You want to know why? Because hmm. she's a woman, and fuck men. <laughs> <laughs> she then does the most melodramatic thing and then says that they are like her family. I'm their mother. Their, or rather, crew, uh, which no one fucking believes. Yeah, no one likes you. I'd sooner believe that C3PO is friends with Ray, Poe, and Finn than I would believe that the doctor is friends with all of these people on this ship. Seven of Nine becomes a Borg Queen, just like I predicted, but the Romulans just jettison the Borg under her control before they can attack, which is a useless attack because she could just take all the Borg, put them back in the ship. 300,000 years ago, uh, the, the eight sons put, put it in the plane in the middle and put the warning and the admonition or whatever they call it. Admonition. Uh, admonition. Admonition, right. Sorry. Uh, and the warning says, uh, don't do what we did. We, we created synth life and likely the Borg. It didn't go well. That's when I realized that they were doing Mass Effect. And I was like, oh, fuck. Hmm. It's crazy. So that was it. Episode 9, I have no fucking notes. I fucking checked out. The one thing that I have written down is 218 warbirds, exclamation, question, exclamation, question, exclamation, 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 question, question, exclamation, question. <sighs> oh, man. 
How many? Uh, 218 warbirds. The Romulan Empire has been fucking destroyed. -uh. And, and their fucking homeworld is gone. And they needed help from across the galaxy from the Federation to help them transport their people to other planets. But then they couldn't do that. The Federation pulls out, so the Romulans are mad at the Federation. But yet they have 218 motherfucking warbirds that could have done that shit on their own. All ships prepare to fight. Yes. Yeah. And that's just <laughs> the fleet dedicated to destroying androids. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't get that one cool scene. Yeah, it was kind of, it was, it was look. It that was cool. like, it was like, oh. How many of them are there? There's twenty. Dun, dun, dun. No, they didn't have to. They, they couldn't say that. There's two hundred and eighteen. Whoa, the stakes are so high. Whoa! <laughs> I can't wait for the next episode. All ships prepare to fight. There was so much wrong with that episode because I'm right to get to this place that would normally have taken like days, like a week yes. to get to this planet. But they get there in like nine hours. Oh, I failed the but turbulence. One little dude, one dude in a Romulan little sh shuttle ship can also figure out how to Borg <laughs> tunnel into the Borg wormhole to get there. And when he oh, sends yeah, the transmission. Calculations. And so when he does that, he doesn't send the calculations to the 218. He's like, no, no, I want you to take a week because I need some yeah. time to. Yeah. Our Romulus shadow is back. She disabled the tracking device. How the hell did he find us? He must have extrapolated from our last known course and position. He must have extrapolated from our last known course and position. <laughs> But he's smart because yeah, he has that little puzzle that he, he knows has the how to little do. puzzle box that can do the thing. He's super smart. Huh? Yeah. He opens up the prize. It's so uh, stupid. Yeah. You see, and then like the line is literally, uh, "How did you keep following them after they lost you? Lost him? Oh, he based off he extrapolated your new position based off your old position. That is not how fucking warp drive works." You cannot know where somebody's going. This is not Star Wars and the fucking <laughs> I hated it there supremacy, too. Jump. the jump, the, the tracker, the warp tracker. The, no. Whatever. Honestly, what I was just doing, I was like, all right, it's probably happened before. Fuck it. No. no. Chalk it up to the to old old he, time. He Let's move on. <laughs> Let's fucking move on. Get the show over with. No. I was like, I'm chalk it up to some Ships constantly retreat through hyperdrive. And the you know battle you do is it. over and you're done. And you, you either follow them to their home planet, see if they went that way, or if they went somewhere else, you're fucked. Yeah, because he said, it's, oh, but <laughs> Anyways, Timmy figures it out, we'll be long gone. I don't know what happens in episode nine. Uh, they get to the planet. I they blacked, uh, blacked out. I th blacked out. There's a, a new Soji, a, uh, uh, like evil bronze Soji that's there. Oh, the data makeup Soji. Yeah, the data makeup Soji she's is even there. even more bronze than, and than data, because she, remember, she's better. Yeah. They, they kind of welcome them in for like a bit. They give them a little doodad because their ship is broken. They hand them this doodad. I, and I had to go I back and rewatch this scene. <laughs> and they're like, what is this? The it, doodad. It fixes things. It yeah. fixes things. What the fuck do you mean it fixes things? And so it looks like a ocarina brass knuckle combination yes. thing. And you use the power of imagination to you can fix, fix your ship. Everything. And so you can fix literally fucking anything with it. This is the most powerful thing that has ever happened in Star Trek. And they're just like, it fixes things. Here, have this. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck is yeah. this? Um, what is this? It fixes things. Um, how? You have to use your imagination. My imagination? Okay. Thank you. So, uh, one, Borg Cube gets maybe taken maybe down by a flower, which was cool looking. Was that in episode nine? I think yeah. so. Because they crash on the planet and then they there. walk over there. Mm -hmm. There's like synths playing soccer because they really want to. His sister's sure. hiding over there in the Borg Cube. Yeah. Because uh, they wanted to tie in his. The, he plays soccer. He plays soccer. Because it, it's important because he sneaks in oh, the you bomb. Play, you play soccer too? It's like, seriously, soccer? Intergalactic fucking soccer. The androids are playing soccer. Yeah. Very and it just so happens that Rios plays soccer. Well, so that's how let's he connect. He sne sneaks in a bomb and a soccer ball, which is the... Oh, yeah. You could come on with that device. Yeah. That soccer ball. We recognize that. Then then evil <laughs> Soji, they, they capture bad Romulan boyfriend. Yes. But evil Soji lets him out. And then... But, but why? Yeah. Oh. She stabs the, okay, yeah, the guard. Okay, yeah. I remember it now. Yeah. 
And the only cool part was that was like, what the fuck are these flowers coming up from the space? Oh, sh oh shit. It's like grabbing us. And whoa, whoa, yeah. what are we doing? We're going down. Yeah. And Oh, wait, but they're actually, wait, no, actually, they're cushioning the fall of the board cube. And okay. They're so kinda they're cool. They're kind of cool. EMP that is flowers. the kind of stuff from TNG. And even I will admit that little doodad, the MacGuffin, is kind of shit that you might find on a TMG ep TNG episode. But... It was far better written and far better executed. Like, but you're right, and that's like one of the most powerful things. That's just basically the Edo uh, guardian protector from that one planet where, mm -hmm. like, you would have to be that level of fucking strong or Q levels of strong, and these they're not. Mm -hmm. So it's this this so thing is so use, stupid. Can they use and you that you thing? immediately see the writing. You immediately see the writers' room and these people. Uh, it, it's just so cringeworthy when something like that is there. It's like this is going to be used to get anybody out of anything as a plot device, and that breaks the immersion of the goddamn story. Especially in the next scene, because the girl that hands them the, the MacGuffin gets stabbed in the eye, like a centimeter deep, stabbed <laughs> in the eye with a necklace, right? Where's the little fucking thing that just goes, bloop, fixed yeah. it. Didn't not not only that, dead, but she's Alex. a goddamn android. <laughs> how does it shut her the fuck down? You she's know how much dead. damage Data has to take before he goes down? No. This, what? I didn't. Whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Episode 10. This is when I, when I basically did my speech of I hate nearly every aspect of the show and I went through every I, single thing. I can't understate cool how much I dislike Star Trek Picard. In fact, I think Enterprise would be a better Star Trek series and I have refused to even watch that one. But now I will because there's no way it's as bad and it makes a mockery of its legacy as this show does. The incestuous, pointless Romulan lust will not go away. Her line is, have you fucked anyone? Like, who the... F Shut up! Nobody gives yeah. a shit! The constant Federation swearing at the legendary Captain Picard. This is the episode, episode 10, where she says, again, Shut the fuck up. Pure fucking hu hubris. The unearned moments that fall on uncaring and deaf ears. The audience is uncaring and deaf. When Elrond says that he cares for Seven of Nine, it, it rings hollow. They just met. It just... You... She just saved you five seconds ago, but you care for her? She's your deep friend? But they're trying to do that because they want yes. so desperately for you to love it. this crew when it's not earned. It's not. You could do that over several episodes. You know how many episodes there are characters that don't fucking like each other in TNG or Voyage or any, and then they slowly grow to learn each other's intricacies and, and pros and cons. But there wasn't and, even that. It, it's <laughs> none of that here. Anyways, uh, the... Little MacGuffin tool we already talked about. It fixes an entire ship in this episode. The hardest thing to possibly fix is just like, oh, our whole yeah, power yeah. core. It's like, dude, dude. I, I thought about it. It was cool. Well, the thing was like, well, I guess I'm skipping ahead. When Picard goes down, she has a little MacGuffin. It's like, it fixes everything. <laughs> 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 Fixed you. Uh, the babble. Does it not work that way? The babble they speak here in that, that scene, Joe, uh, they say this. They say, Jaha Lagul. The Jahalagul. You know when she blows a blast on the horn, it will unleash all the Jahalagul who have been waiting since the beginning of time. You know the sky will crack, and through the crack in the sky, the Jahalagul will come ravening. You know... It, it's somehow stupid as hell. Where it the was, campfire? Where it wouldn't... Yeah, where oh, it wouldn't okay. be yeah, otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be otherwise, where he's doing his, his speech, and, and this is kind of like a TNG stuff. This is what feels more like TNG and stuff, and I'm... But even here, it just rings so hollow because these characters, you don't buy them. You don't, you're looking at a writer's <laughs> room and none of that. Ja, the, the Jahalagul. Shut, shut up. When, I, when he said that, I was like, isn't Jahalagul. that a villain from Batman? Yeah, the <laughs> Jahalagul. Uh, it, so, and then Dr. Data, you know, the, the, yeah. the brother. Oh, hey, Alton. hey, guys. You didn't know I existed, Surprise. but I'm the brother of the roommate of the thing. Yeah, but didn't I you die? I just nah, I'm his brother. <laughs> I'm his like, cousin. This is soap opera? What Twice the fuck removed. is this? So this Dr. Data, essentially, you know, he's like a bad guy, but then he switches sides in like three seconds flat, and, and now he's the goodest of all good guys. And then he kills one of his own and, droids. And, and, he, and the, these droids that he would do anything for. And then you see the writing? Like, this is what we call psych, contrived. Psych, this is what we call psych. tropey. This is what we call weak writing when you have to do shit like that, and people turn on a fucking dime. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. The motivations are fucked. Anyways, um, they attempt to fight all the androids. That was their plan. Okay, well, let's just fight every single fucking android that is 15 times stronger than us. They you couldn't not find see what they did way. to the fucking planet? Right. They attempt, <laughs> uh, they can, and, and then this is great. The warbirds start to warp in. 
and then they go like this. They're on the planet. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they heard them. They heard the warpers. They heard the warpers warp into goddamn or space. They didn't warp into low orbit, Joe. They warped into goddamn space. Okay, Way look, past the listen, planet. Their monitors. No. Maybe, it went, maybe it went beep. No, this was before the monitors popped up and showed all the ships. They heard the. Their warmers. eyes are like mini telescopes. Okay. Oh shit! Fine. <laughs> um, earlier, another one is like chocolate. I up. swear maybe to God, before. if I can, I don't even want to edit this. I don't even want to put in don't. clips don't. of edit. But I swear to God, it says earlier they said they have five orchids left. They're like, oh, my God, we have to fight 218 warbirds. What do we have? Well, I got a gun. I got a fist. And we got five orchids left. How many of those things do you have? Five. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And I loved this scene. They said that they had five and that they could make more. And, the, and there's maybe like 13 in the sky. And then they all attack the warbirds. Though the, probably the warbirds would have eviscerated those flowers because there's 218 warbirds. But whatever. Creative license. This was really cool. And this was one of the shining moments of the episode. Almost worth the price of admission. Like I said, there are good moments in here. But I, it's just... You know, there, there's little member berry things here. The, the member berries get out of control. The it. member berries with the Picard maneuver. Uh, we they just mentioned the Picard maneuver for no oh, reason. that is a new We order. also skipped over that a synth can uh, Vulcan mind meld. Hmm. That's that's something that's horrible. She read the books. No. She read the oh she read the books. So yeah. every every oh she studied them. She studied their culture. YouTube videos. So because you studied their culture, you could do it. You could you just know how to you do just it. Know how to do it. YouTube videos. Oh, no. Okay. It's so stupid. <laughs> Um, so, Easy. so they just mentioned the Picard mover out of nowhere, just for member berries. If you figure out a way to get us out of this one, I'll name it after you. Picard maneuver. Wait, no. No, that's actually a thing, isn't it? And for no reason. Then Picard says, oh, no, that wouldn't work here. Uh, and then the very next line explains the extremely rare instance that it will work here. It will be useless against so many enemy vessels. <laughs> We'd have to multiply the sensor images and then find some way to disperse them. Like an ancient warplane scattering bits of mirror to overwhelm a radar system. And then just the MacGuffin suddenly comes back, even though the doctor didn't use it before. She uses it to project her stupid face on a bunch all of, of them <laughs> a bunch of fucking yeah. times, yeah. <laughs> implying that it's the exact thing that the ship needs to duplicate itself. And remember. She is going to retrofit this device in less than six minutes, as stated before, because they have less than six minutes. But at this point, it's like four minutes. So she has four minutes to retrofit this device into this fucking stupid ship to project her stupid goddamn face a bunch of times. Well, she's going to project the ship, but a bunch of times. So you didn't think that was tense? In less than four in minutes. That's If cheeks? you have the power of <laughs> imagination. This is my problem with... All of the, the early riding. Green Lantern bullshit is like, you have the power of imagination. What'd you make? <laughs> I have a hammer. It's like, you have this thing right. that apparently can make anything you want. Let's make like the super <laughs> space nuke or like a Romulan virus that like can go through space and whole walls. If and it just goes like, I'm going to, everyone's dust. <laughs> if you don't think that this writing is ridiculous and off the rails and bad, you do not have good taste. I'm sorry. You can get mad at me. You can call me a jerk, an asshole, but I'll be the one. I'll be the one that falls on the sword. This is ridiculous. And to further support my argument, the first thing that the Romulan says, the Romulan admiral, she warps in. Execute planetary sterilization plan five. Ready planetary sterilization pattern number five. What happened to the first... <laughs> Exactly. Well, what happened to plan one, two, and three? Oh, well, that's when there aren't androids with flower creatures with uh, an old man leading mm -hmm. the... It, one is that, Tribbles, that was, that, two is Lizard yeah. Men, and, and three is Klingon. Yeah. You know, you, you and know. four, you, you don't want to know. Four, you yeah. do not want to know what four is. Anyway, <laughs> so stupid. He couldn't try. The goddamn writing is hilarious. Why would the... And then the Federation shows up. They have this massively large fleet. That was kind of cool. Of some of the coolest fucking ships ever. Oh, I fucking love. It was the stupid fact as fuck, we, but it was. We, I was like, right. yes. yes, because you don't ever really get to see the Federation in those numbers mm. ever. Maybe the Dominion War. Maybe in some of the later episodes in TNG when shit is getting fucking real. But we see it here, and it, and it's like a cheap thing. But tell me this: Why would the Federation send that large a fleet? 
or even half a fleet that size? Why would they have that on standby? They hated androids. They banned them. They refused to help the Romulans. They hated androids. They banned the androids. Why would a fleet that size be on fucking standby in seconds? Probably took them three days to get it together. Well, I'll say. He I'll sent say out a message. Well, Riker, I guess. Is well, the yeah, one so that this is did. one of those things that I thought about. So it's Lando. And Lando Carnissian shows yeah. up. I mean, Riker shows up. Because it was going to take them like seven or eight days to get there normally. But then the, he see, in a throwaway line later, he said, these are the fastest ships ever. So it's like, okay, maybe he made up three days' time. And there was three days' logistical period. And he conscripted himself and volunteered. And as all of the dumb things, this is like number 1001. So yeah. I'm going to like, <laughs> fine, I'll give you. There's sure, so much no, other stupid shit. I too. I forgive it too because it was a cool moment. Rikers at the I head of the but no one fired that. anything. I wanted you yes. to start fucking firing on fire each other. everything. Well, they but yeah, did. the very the exact holograms. reason y'all made fun of Star Trek Discovery's first two episodes for having a goddamn badass battle is now what you wanted here. But not y'all, but other people. Like oh, fuck y'all. Discovery, Discovery is better than Star Trek this Picard. I'm sorry. Anyways, <clears throat> so why uh, almost worth it though? That's why I wrote. Oh, it's almost worth it to see Riker in command in such a large fleet. Oh, and he and he's just like he fucking owns swinging it. it around, going swinging like swinging his fucking dick. I just, wish you would. I wanted him to be sitting the opposite because <laughs> the way so that Riker good. sits in chairs is backwards because he always wants to be crotch out, yeah. and so he turns a chair around and just like just straddles it. Crotch. And I wanted him to have like a folding chair he was straddling yeah. while swinging his dick, <laughs> sure. going like I'm gonna blow you up. Yeah, but he. But didn't. that's not what he said. He said it in the quintessential Federation. I'm like. Riker is the Federation. He's the real Federation. Yeah. Not fucking uh, was the old lady, the you know pure Fucker. fucking hubris, uh, Clancy or whatever. It's Riker. So that's what made me feel faith in the Federation again. Anyway, <clears throat> but it was supposed to. Picard meets Data in death. Uh, he goes down. Right. He's uh they they have Data stored in uh, this positronic quantum entanglement quantum room realm, realm. place. Anyway, Picard tells Data that he loves him. And then, uh, you know, and that was a good moment. They, you know, they tried to give closure to Data's death. I wish Data didn't have to die, but they did it. And so, and we never got a real goodbye. So we got a goodbye here and it was cool and I liked it. Yeah, I love this scene. Uh, like, I, I, like, this was definitely the highlight of the entire series, series for me. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I it love felt TNG too. It yeah. felt, you know, like, but on steroids and better yeah. and good. I was kind of upset where they're like, oh, Data's alive. It's like, you've been here for like four, five, six, seven days, and you didn't tell me that the guy who sacrificed himself <clears throat> for me, one of yeah. my friends like that we worked together for 20 years, is alive in that quantum room. Yeah. Fuck you. Right. <laughs> so now you, 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 hate, you hate me. You hate this whole video because you like Star Trek Picard. Yeah. But I'll tell you, this scene, the Riker scene, the fleet, this scene, it's all 9 out of 10. It's all like fucking 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10. This is what we wanted. But th it, none of this. I've been listening to their rendition of Blue Skies like over and over for like the last week. Yeah, it's good. It says, but then Picard comes back as a golem. Picard is a golem. He's a golem. He's a synth. Uh, why did Dr. Sung give up his golem? He's just going to make another one. Okay. Picard kills Data by request. Um, <coughs> and everything ties in a bow at the end there, uh, which is so... So disingenuous, so stupid. The doctor gets with Captain Rios. They 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 imply that they have they're a holding real hands or something, right? Like they're holding on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheap. Se seven of nine gets with with Rafi. Ra Ralphie. Cheap. That makes no sense. Uh, and then just why are they a crew like these people? I don't understand. It's a ragtag team. And I will no. say it has its moments too. Basically, I wrote Riker and Data. <laughs> and here's the th the main criticism: nothing. Nothing is allowed to set. Nothing is allowed to breathe. Nothing can be elaborated on. Nothing can be contemplated on. Everything is, let's go. Next thing. Go, go. Next. Uh, yeah. Maybe go. And, and then it, no. All right. I well. didn't want him to be a golem. I would rather they use the doodad and they're like, hey, we fixed you. It's not going to give you yeah, long. Like, like just prolong it. it, right? But so, like, what I don't want. Wait is a minute. This was they got the doodad. Yeah, so I said earlier. Said. Do, use the doodad. I, yeah. yeah, use the doodad. I was like, I use wanna, your imagination. Or oh, use your heels. You got a doodad. The doodad is more. Uh, I would have used it myself if I was Picard. Dude. I'm 30 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's what I wanted from him. I didn't want him to be like, oh, you're a robot body, but no, we, made you we made you exactly, exactly the same the way. Old, and, and you will die very soon. 
and we know exactly when well, you're going to die. What the point? Well, Why when? did you do this to me? <laughs> I've gone for another 10 years, 20 years. Yeah, I would have liked 20. No, Picard, 10. Okay. So does that mean that science tells you exactly when you're going to die? Like, well, Trek, withstanding yeah, something, you know, something accidental. Yeah. With this much technology, that's fucked up. I didn't want it. <sighs> I didn't want it either. As soon as Data closed his like eyes, and then it should have made it to black, and then they should have been like, and then everyone went home and forget about all this. Don't be racist. I am going to forget about this. Because Picard is a synth. And you like Picard, so you like synths. Well, they remind you at the end. He's like, I can, you can go anywhere you want. And now, so Me can I. Because I'm a synth too. That's Whoa. what he says. <laughs> well, we can't breathe in space because the board can't. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. I would have laughed. The ship is going, and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> a fucking boy. <laughs> Help! <laughs> We're dad. still alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, great way to end it, guys. Um, so those were all of our plot holes. Not looking nitpicks. forward uh, to not all of them. Season. Season. No, there's no. So many I, more. I just like there's huge areas t- t- where I could tell I got so t- mad <laughs> so that I just stopped. You want to go on more? I got some more written down. Sure. The whole point of this whole fucking thing is Bruce Maddox sent out two synths to go investigate yes. the purpose of the synth ban, right? So they send one to Japan to to meet with the doctor. Kind of makes sense. She sends so he sends Soji to a board cube. Why? Why is Soji at a board cube to figure out why the synth ban was there? I, I, I don't, don't fucking know. know either. I don't fucking no know. One know. You don't know either. Because it, how is she going to fall in love with that stupid guy? Because the Borg are somehow tied guy. into this. No. Or no, the Romulans the are at right, the Borg. The, Borg the, Ro- right the Romulans are at the Borg. Y- yes. So they're going to talk to the Romulans? The Romulans are a lot of other places other than the artifact. Maybe they knew how much the Romulans hated the bo- the synths and it, wanted to extend the artifact an olive is, branch. I, I don't know. No, there's no reason. There's literally, literally no, and they ask in episode nine, they're like, hey, did you accomplish your mission? It's like, what the fuck was her mission? What was your mission? Well, her mission, like, go fall in love and fuck some random, yeah. uh, like, Romulan spy guy, <laughs> then get her some, mind opened up. Some, like, <laughs> well, how else are they going to incorporate the cube? Yeah. Betrayer. Uh, Don't you I remember just, the cube? People like the cube. These, there you go. <laughs> these, uh, these synths are so far beyond data that it's like, data compared to the other androids and TNG, right? Because these ones have libidos. These ones, like, fall in love with people. Like, it's not like Data had sex with with, uh, Lieutenant Yar, right? But he's not, like, into it. He's just like, all right, I'm just going to do it. But, like, this girl is, like, fall in love with, like, this random people that she sees. So Bruce Maddox is sitting at his computer going, like, libido to 11. (laughs) And, like... (laughs) It yeah, he fucked 11. up on so It's just like, what are you doing? I was like, in love with like the ugliest, most betrayed, most sinister, fucking shitty ass dude. But they play this dude like he's fucking cool as shit. And and then they, and he, I, I actually cut out a lot of his shit because I would like, I just would black out when he'd get on the screen because he's so fucking shitty. Him and his sister and their incestuous relationship. But oh, I'm cool now. Can I join your team? I'm throwing rocks at your shit. We need to work together. I could have blown you up with these grenades, but I'm not going to because I'm like the coolest and I'm like the hottest. Well, yeah, so. yeah, you gotta save the grenades for the soccer ball, and he kicks the soccer. Like he the kicks the soccer the ball to blow up the thing. That's how this oh, thing man. ends. This <laughs> ends because the Mexican space captain <laughs> kicks a grenade-filled soccer ball at the beacon that summons the That's space snake. That's racist. Yeah, I know. It doesn't make any goddamn That's sense. Racist. But Soji's the best goalkeeper Alex ever. Alex Kurtzman is <laughs> sexist, racist, and a piece of fucking shit. And he ruined Star Trek. But there's space. Is his snakes. name Alex? It's Alex Kurt- Alex. Kurtzman Kurt- and Michael Chabon. You, you. Anyways. Yeah, well, not me. I'm what not else? saying I could have done better than so him. You're looking but forward to season it, this was terrible. Two? No, <laughs> because the guy Michael said uh, season two is going to be more of what you've seen. Oh yeah, it's going to be your more CBS of the same. Because there's more nothing the else same. on CBS unless I'm you're not, watching. I'm not review. I'm not reviewing it. I'm not watching it. I, I hate it. Done. Yes, we are. I hated <laughs> this so fucking much. It made me so angry, and it ruined Star Trek. At my, you know, and it ruins the direction of my characters. I don't want this to be. But I real. want Worf, and I want Jordy, and why? I, so they can fuck him up. Yeah, Worf yeah, every- is gonna be a fucking janitor on <laughs> a fucking. I see that. I <laughs> He's going to be a fucking janitor in an all-female convent who they're whipping him with chains because he was an evil man I who can was think a of warrior. nothing else that he would have, like, like <laughs> evil nuns whipping him in prune juice, and he's he probably, set. He probably would like that. 
Uh, and then we have uh, Jordy LaForge. What is he doing? Uh, he's on the Pleasure Planet. He finally found a woman. He's a polygamist. He's got 17 wives. Yeah. Uh, and I want him to have a happy ending. <laughs> No pun intended. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and then Beverly Crusher. Uh, they got divorced, right, yeah. in the lore? Yeah, so she's, so she's just going to be there hating on Picard dead. the entire time? No, no. She's going to be the person, like, nagging at him as the ex-wife character. You're stupid the entire time. Wait a minute. Can we still get them together? That would be like the saving grace. Oh, they I mean, get back I really, together? I wanted, I wanted them to be happily ever after. But they obviously doesn't work with the finale of TNG unless the Q, the, you know, Q continuum changed everything. Oh, fuck. Uh, here's the only reason, the only way you might get me back. I know Whoopi oh, Goldberg's going to be there is Q. That's I would the love only to way. see Q come I back. Wanna, yeah. I want to see Q fuck with everything and just Q, please save us. Just change the whole reality. He has that much power, he can just fucking change yeah. everything back. <laughs> All right, I'm, Bring I'm Q in season two and maybe... <laughs> Maybe I might put myself through this again. You look ridiculous. All right, guys. <laughs> that's I? it. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, Bye guys. guys.